Hey guys. Part 2 of What If Naruto Was in Mass Effect. Hit like and subscribe if you like this one and also please check the author in the description. Let's start. We are pain, that's all. We are God. Chapter 6. Operation Teamwork. Being a CCC contracted P-Dada was evidently good business Jane thought, as she and Naruto sat down for dinner to celebrate her Spectre promotion. The ninja having asked that they go to a weapon shop first, so that Naruto had some items other than the spare marine armor that had been rather quickly adapted to his size, before then asking if she then wanted to go for ramen afterwards. The request for assistance with procuring Naruto some new equipment had surprised her slightly. The young ninja usually determined to do everything by himself if he could at all manage it. And if he had been a bit older, Jane would have assumed he was yet another idiot trying to get into her pants by flaunting some money around. But that was just her rather pessimistic view on men shining through probably, and Naruto didn't seem the type that was used to having money at all, let alone enough of it to go on a spending spree like this. They had left the others at the Normandy for now, even though Jane had agreed to have Tali. Gurus and Rex joined their crew that didn't mean she trusted them enough to let her guard down yet. They were each a specialist in their own fields and given the magnitude of the task before her, Jane wasn't going to turn down free allies, especially ones she actually knew without a doubt were against Saren. But that didn't mean they weren't working for someone else that might decide to cause her trouble, so for now she would keep them at arm's length, Naruto clones watching their every move. As for the two alliance members of her strike force, Ashley needed some rest after all the running around and cadence implants had started acting up, meaning it was only the two of them. So after a cab journey that took them away from the core of the citadel, and instead into one of its arms, Naruto was now armed with a Firestorm MK4 shotgun, a pair of striker pistols and dressed in predator armor that probably matched or exceeded her own armor at the moment in terms of defensive capability. Though she had been honest with her appraisal of the different weapon and armor types and their key points, Jane had initially balked at the final price tag when he had followed her suggestions almost to the letter. But Naruto had just given her another of his slightly infuriating grins before paying with a credit chip she certainly hadn't seen anyone give him and promising to explain later. After another mouthful of noodles, Jane decided that she might as well broach the topic now before it bugged her further. Naruto, where did you get the money to buy that equipment? You've only been on the Citadel a day. Naruto chuckled and tapped something into his Omni tool, not quite as agile as a normal person yet, but given his lack of familiarization it was incredible quite how quickly he was adapting. Jane-chan, are you accusing me of immoral activities? Even with the indignation in his voice Naruto's grin remained, and as she checked the mail that he had forwarded to her she could understand why. The council gave you how much? Just because you are a new species that needs help integrating into society? And yet they expect me to fund my hunt for Saren on my own money? Naruto chuckled again and shook his head, even as her inbox chimed again with a notification of her accounts, showing a deposit of 50,000 credits had been made less than a minute ago from an unknown account. Despite the generosity of the gesture Jane couldn't help but get angry at the young man in front of him. She didn't need pity from him even if that isn't how he meant it. Naruto seemed to realize her change in mood before she had a chance to speak, the young man quick to hold up his hands defensively as her own tightened into fists. Whatever you are thinking Jane-chan, it's not like that. Despite her inner urge to make her opinion of what it seemed like very clear, Jane decided to give Naruto a chance to explain himself first. After all, he had already surprised her a couple of times, this might yet be another one of them. From what the council said along with Yudina-san's information, specters can act as everything from business owners to assassins, as long as they keep broadly within the rules of the citadel races and don't do anything overly against the law. So in effect, you are now in the same job role that I used to be in Jane Chan only with a lot more freedom from your boss aka the council to pick and choose any other jobs you wish to take. Way to water down her promotion even further, Naruto now made her sound like a gun for hire more than anything else. So with that in mind, the credits are a down payment on the job we already agreed on, back on the Normandy before we had to deal with these idiots. It took a moment, Jane's memories of the last few days since the rather whirlwind arrival of the young ninja, 
but then it clicked and she actually felt slightly guilty for her earlier anger. Naruto, I said I would help you look for your people because it is the right thing to do, not because of money. This is your money to start a life here, you could use it to get information. Jane paused as Naruto held up a hand and pointed at the email that she still had open on her arm. You didn't read the small print Jane-chan, that money is more the council's attempt to shut me up and get me off the citadel. Obviously they didn't like me helping you during their bullshit. Jane giggled slightly as the memories of the Turian counselor came to the forefront of her mind, Naruto lowering his hand and relaxing a little as he finished explaining. So me giving you the money is, in order of increasing importance, a massive fuck you to the three of them for what they tried to pull on us twice. My contribution to the let's stop some maniac from trying to wipe out the galaxy fund and... Naruto paused and for the first time he looked actually uneasy with what he was going to say next. What is it Naruto? The ninja seemed to wrestle with something for a moment before he smiled apologetically at her. An apology for effectively blackmailing the council into promoting you into being a specter. Whilst it works out very well for me as I can travel the galaxy looking for my people with you, that doesn't mean that it was the right way for it to happen. Jane couldn't help but smile at the obvious awkwardness Naruto was exhibiting. It wasn't exactly as if the council had any other choice given the circumstances anyway. Naruto, don't worry about it. At his slightly disbelieving look she slugged him in the arm, which to her counted as camaraderie. Honestly Naruto it's fine. I am somewhat used to getting promotions due to politics rather than merit unfortunately. I was only a squad eye when Elysium was hit and then suddenly the promotions came storming in. Even the one to the Normandy could be considered a promotion, not that I saw it that way. It was only as Naruto tilted his head in obvious confusion that Jane realized that despite his rapid acclimatization he was still a complete novice to galactic history and her recent role in it. That was probably one of the reasons she found herself so comfortable with the young ninja. Even if they didn't mean to, almost everyone she spoke to or worked with in the Alliance talked to her with the kind of awe that bordered on reverence. She tried not to let it piss her off but it was irritating to be held up on such a pedestal and then judged for everything she did based against that inhuman image. A memory of a snarling batarian stood over her father's corpse came to the fore of her mind and she shook her head to remove it even as she came to a decision. Whilst she couldn't tell Naruto about all of her past, hell even Anderson didn't know about her darkest moments, it would be better he hear what happened on Elysium from her rather than one of her admirers. Stealing her nerves, Jane began to speak. I suppose I should explain a little more about myself for you to understand that. It was my first tour of duty after graduating the Marine Academy. Naruto turned out to be a pretty good listener despite his usually sarcastic and gobby attitude, nodding at the right moments and keeping himself to short questions about things. Jane couldn't say it was nice to talk about it all once more, the number of reports and evaluations she had been forced to complete in the years after her rather desperate defense meant it had become almost a numbing experience. But the fact that Naruto had no preconceived notions about her, and didn't seem at all put off by the rather brutal melee combat she had resorted to when she had finally run out of ammo, was strangely calming. Though his lack of distaste for the messiness of close-quarter fighting made sense considering he came from a society that didn't know what guns were until their genocide began so it was probably a norm for him. At the end of it Naruto shrugged, which wasn't the reaction Jane expected either way. As much as you probably don't want to hear this Jane-chan, that is how it always happens. If it weren't for that kind of favoritism in fact I probably wouldn't even be here. Now that was the sort of statement which promised an interesting story, and after bearing her heart, as much as she could really imagine herself managing— Jane felt that she was owed some personal information of her erstwhile and still mysterious companion. Line Break Telling the tale of his graduation, with a large amount of artistic license of course to avoid mentioning the QB, Naruto knew that he had managed to distract Jane from her own insecurities about her promotion for the time being. Whilst he and the QB had come to something of an agreement after the invasion, the fox far less keen to break out after they had seen what happened to Karabi and the Hachibi. That didn't mean he wanted anyone to know about his major trump card until push came to need to annihilate a small army in a few minutes. So he made Mizuki out to be a simple infiltrator who had just used Naruto as the fall guy to steal village secrets for him, 
the Hokage promoting him despite his rather sketchy academy performance due to his parents, as he had known them before they died. It wasn't entirely untrue and had been something that had plagued Naruto after Konoha had fallen, the boy struggling in the first couple of months due to his rather deficient academy lessons on things like survival skills. If it hadn't been for people like Sakura to teach him, Naruto was sure even the Kyuubi wouldn't have been able to stop him from dying due to infection and all the other fun slow ways to die that came with living in the wild. Sarutobi in his right mind shouldn't have promoted him even with Kagebushin to use as a massive crutch, so Naruto guessed it had to do with the Kyuubi and his parents, whose identity Jiraiya had belated revealed during one of Naruto's manic depressive stints. After beating the old sage to a pulp for not telling him sooner, which was lengthened when Jiraiya was stupid enough to mention he was also his godfather, Naruto had gone on a robot killing spree so he had time to think. Whilst he didn't like the fact that revealing his heritage would have reversed his terrible childhood, the fact that a couple of the IWA survivors they had managed to rescue had to be restrained from trying to kill him meant it was obviously a good decision in the greater view of things. While I think that might be on par with my shitty teenage years, and no I don't want to talk about that. Jane's comment brought him back to the conversation that had somehow managed to make both of them talk about their past, which was something Naruto had been quite determined not to do but had failed rather spectacularly at already. No worries Jane-chan, I won't pry any further I promise. Now I think. Yes, let's have another three miso ramen and also one of those exotic ramen. He looked back at Jane ready to continue talking when he saw the look of shock on her face as she looked between the three already emptied bowls in front of him and his stomach. His grin widened as he recognized the look many people had given him when he was younger and had watched him eat, whilst it wasn't an important thing he still liked to think of it as a type of prank, and he always enjoyed his pranks. After those four bowls of ramen Naruto decided to take pity on Jane and stop there rather than blow her mind with how much he could truly eat. So after some more light-hearted bantering about the bill, which Naruto liked to think he won with his query about if he paid for it would it count as a date. The meaty bruise from Jane's shocked sweat to the face well worth it for the blush he managed to bring out. The fact she felt guilty about it was definitely a bonus as his advantage would last longer than the actual damage given his healing factor, and having your effective boss feeling like she owes you something was pretty much never a bad idea. Their return to the Normandy from the Presidium was interrupted by his name being called out through the rather quiet evening crowds. Naruto recognizing Nirali Badia as she approached with a middle-aged man of a similar skin complexion in close pursuit. Naruto, excuse me Naruto. Oh sorry Spectre I didn't mean to interrupt your business. Nirali had obviously not seen Jane when she had called out to him, and whilst Nirali seemed uncaring about Jane's new status the man with her gasped in slight shock before giving a bow. Jane seemed to do her best not to get irritated at the interruption, and undisguised off from the man with Nirali and the other humans who had heard her shout. In an attempt to move the attention and conversation onwards Naruto stepped forwards between the three of them and bowed slightly to Nirali. Hello there Nirali-chan, I am glad to see the last of your injuries have healed up now, what can I do for you? Nirali smiled genially at him before returning his bow, subtly elbowing the man with her into doing the same. I just wanted to take the opportunity to thank you again for saving me on Eden Prime. With everything that is going on I didn't really get a chance. Also, this is my husband Sange. He wanted to try and get you to talk me out of accompanying you on the Normandy as Dr. Chuck was assistant. If you will have me Spectre? The now introduced Sange was quick to follow up Nirali's comment, wringing his hands together anxiously as he did so. You're no soldier Nirali. It is bad enough you went to Eden Prime with Geth Attack. Until I got your message I thought I had lost you. Now you wish to join the Spectre's entourage and go back into danger? Please Spectre, can you make her see reason? The man's impassioned plea was better than Naruto had actually expected. Many people in his position would let their fears and worries turn into anger far too easily. I know I am no soldier, but other than Commander Shepard, Naruto here and a few others I actually have experience of dealing with the aftermath of a Geth attack. I helped both on Eden Prime and also when Dr. Chukwas was dealing with the injured servicemen on the way back to the Citadel. Nirali's similarly impassioned outburst garnered even more attention than her shout of Spectre had, many people stopping and starting to listen to the unfolding argument even as Nirali continued, 
her voice lowering as she looked pleadingly at Jane. Please, Spectre, after all that I have been through I want to be useful, rather than just stand aside and cower until it is too late. Given the number of Geth and the size of that ship, Eden Prime cannot be the only colony they are going to attack. I am a fully trained Dr. Spectre and have high scores in basic training. It's why I was posted to Eden Prime. Nirali made a good point, and no doubt there would be an awful lot of wagging tongues and extranet posts in the aftermath of this either way. Naruto was all for Nirali joining them. She knew his secret after also keeping her on the Normandy made tactical sense as well as her being one of his few friends thus far. Also, given the scene around them, she had just made herself a target if Saren felt like getting any more information about what happened on Eden Prime. Given the grim look on Jane's face she probably had realized the same thing. Mr. Badia, I understand your concerns, but I assure you that the safest place for your wife to be during this will be on the Normandy. Based on what we know about the fugitive who is working with the Geth, he has an anti-human sentiment that means he will be wanting to target any of the survivors from Eden Prime that might have information related to him. The point made Sange look even more anxious, and Naruto could tell he was about to become unreasonable. So in an attempt to mitigate the messy marital argument to come as well as reinforce the fake image of his honor-bound sense of duty, Naruto spoke up in his best confident manner. Badia-san, your concern for your wife is touching, but she became a doctor because she wanted to help people. You can't stop her from doing that without trying to stop her being herself. And besides, she will be safe on the ship and I will keep an eye on her. She owes me for saving her life and I won't let anything happen to one of my friends. He had thought about saying something about keeping an eye on her until she could pay him back, but that wouldn't help calm Sainch down in all likelihood. Sainch was obviously surprised by his input, no doubt due to his age more than anything else, but it seemed that it had managed to calm the man down to the point he was realizing he wasn't going to win this particular fight. With the man seemingly convinced Nirali seemed much happier and they continued to talk for a few more minutes before Jane made her excuses about having to get back to the ship which Naruto took as their cue to leave. She did flash him a two-fingered hand signal with her left hand whilst they were saying their goodbyes, which was part of the code they had been working on given his more, unique abilities. It was still fairly basic, but if Jane indicated with her left hand she was indicating a number of clones up to five that she wanted scouting the area or in this case keeping an eye of the bodyas. If she used her right hand then she wanted batches of five clones based on the number of fingers, these would be used more for straight-up area denial or combat if they were alone or with those they could trust. So as they departed, Naruto used the rather mass crowds to slip away into the side alleys and from there the higher levels of the citadel. Now out of the way and unlikely to be spotted, Naruto formed the hand sign that was so familiar to him now it almost felt as natural as breathing. He created twenty clones, pointing at two of them to indicate which ones he wanted to follow the body as. The surplus clones would spread out and see if they could follow the already dispersing gossip back to anyone linked with Saren. Not that he thought any of it would, most of the clones had only gathered information relating to various small gangs and their activities aboard the station, which he planned on compiling and giving into the executor later. He shifted back to Jane, no one any the wiser, ready to head back to the Normandy in an attempt to get to know their new team. Then suddenly an idea came to him about how to use his information, and Jane's new status, in a way that would definitely help both of them. Jane Taishu? Obviously his use of the more official suffix and grin told more of a tale than he thought it would, Jane looking at him a little warily even as she replied. Yes, Naruto? Oh yes, Naruto was going to enjoy explaining this one. Line break. Thirty crates of red sand, dozens of illegal weapons and mods. 14 smugglers and what's left of their hired muscle, the list goes on. Yes, Jane concluded, Naruto had been right when he had said that the executor wasn't going to be happy with them, probably the reason the blonde ninja had found excuses not to be here for it. Palin seemed undecided between apocalyptic anger or frustrated approval of their actions, which was reasonable Jane thought with hindsight as her team had very much rocked the citadel boat as it were. Palin had been listing the items her teams had delivered or secured for CCC in what Naruto had jokingly termed Operation Teamwork. Jane had to give the young man credit. He was definitely unorthodox in his ideas and they were generally very good ones. 
The amount of data on gangs and other criminals his small but widespread clone network had gathered was astounding and definitely gave her enough targets. But as they soon discovered that was a limiting factor in and about itself. The sheer volume meant that Jane was quickly overwhelmed as she tried to come up with a cohesive target plan, the Naruto clones doing little to distinguish targets by importance or ease of targeting, meaning that she had tried to do it herself. Then she remembered that she had the entire bridge crew of the Normandy available to her and quickly delegated the task to them, suiting up and leading some of the ground forces in order to relieve some of the frustration the data analysis had built up. She had Gurus lead the Alliance Marines that had been seconded to her command, under the watchful eye of Caden so that he could evaluate his skills to make sure he would be as useful in battle as he would be as an investigator. Jane would have liked to evaluate the Turin herself, despite the executor's very impressive report Jane was someone who liked to trust, but verify, but she was busy leading her own strike team of Ashley, Tali and three of the other Marines. I am glad that you managed to keep it quiet and had Gurus leading the main team. People are thinking this is a CSCC operation for now and I think you want to keep it that way Spectre. Especially given the carnage Uzumaki and his newest compatriot caused in the wards. Ah yes her new clearing team, Naruto and Rex would probably not have been most people's first choice as a small team, but she had thought that the Krogan's durability and Naruto's speed would work well together. In their defense executor, there were no civilian casualties and they did clear their objectives much faster than Gurus' more conventional approach. And why would I want to keep this action a secret, allowing CCC to get the glory? Executor Paolin looked torn for a moment before he replied with a resigned air that Jane was starting to notice he used a lot when she and Naruto were involved. Primarily because you will cause me and the council a pijack storm of trouble in the media if it gets out that a brand new Spectre can clear up more of the Citadel in one day than my men can do in a month. The idea of pissing the council off was tempting, and it would probably get them working that little bit faster on finding leads for her if there was the implied threat she would just carry on until she had some other direction. And I know the council have probably deserved whatever plot you are planning with that smirk, but I hope that you remember how helpful I have been in your previous adventures before your ascension, and therefore don't want to doom me to dealing with that beyond what you are making me sort out now. Ah, uh, yeah, I would say I am sorry but I still like to think that I've done you a good turn today. If not, blame your new contractor, it was his idea. If Naruto was going to avoid this meeting, Jane was going to make sure he got at least some of the heat from it. No, it is true that this will make my life a little easier in the long run, and your point about Uzumaki brings me to the second reason you should let this be a CCC op, and I promise that this will go a long way to leveling the field with your new employer. Have you heard of the Spectre Assistance section in the CSEC Codex? Oh, well this sounded promising. Pushing herself off the wall she had leant against during Palin's rant about the goods, Jane could smell a good negotiating opportunity arising and that brought a real smile to her face. Barter and negotiation had been the keystones in her time at the orphanage post Mindware and had served her well at the academy. She liked to think she had a knack for it that went beyond just enjoying the victory at the end. By all means, Executor, why don't you enlighten me? Judging by the combative grin of the Executor's own face, she wasn't the only one who was going to enjoy this. Chapter 7. Filled to the Bilge Pumps 100,000 credits? I can imagine the Council weren't very happy with the bill. Naruto was leaning back against the wall in her room, having caught up with her when she returned to the Normandy from whatever business he had been busy with. No, they weren't but it's not like there was a lot they could do other than authorize the payment as Paolin was the one who had reported the results of Operation Sting to them. So now she had more money than she had ever had before in her life, even with the outlays such as fuel and supplies to replace what was used on Eden Prime. And if this doesn't get them to release Saren Team's files to us, I have some other targets for us to hit tomorrow morning, automatic data transfer my ass. Speaking of today's work, Naruto walked forwards and held out a data pad, Jane taking it in mild confusion only to find a manifest of goods ranging from medical supplies to weapons. I had a bunch of henge clones follow behind me and Rex and they took everything that wasn't nailed down. Getting to the part where things like turret remnants were included, Jane got the feeling that Naruto was being sarcastic about the nailed part. All of the obviously illegal stuff I handed into CCC, 
The rest is being held in your newly acquired warehouse area. One of the smugglers had the deed. And the warehouse owner was comfortable with you signing the deed over on my behalf without the smuggler even being charged yet. She had a suspicion about how Naruto had pulled that off, which was confirmed when he reached up and scratched the back of his head a little awkwardly. Well, I might have had a clone hinged as you tell him exactly what we had hit on the citadel so far, and how it would be a shame if we searched certain areas of his warehouse that I had found were owned by some of the other people we hit today. The Turian was pretty damn quick to help us sign things over after that. Shepard couldn't help but shake her head at the rather heavy-handed approach Naruto had used in intimidating the warehouse owner, but it wasn't like he had done anything illegal, other than pretending to be her so that all the other illegal things became legal of course. Well, the smuggler will eventually petition for his damn space back, assuming he doesn't mind pissing me off to do it, but having somewhere to store things such as these in the meantime will be very useful. But seriously Naruto, I am going to need you to start telling me before you do things like this, especially if you are going to pretend to be me to do it. Jane didn't mean to be harsh with him. After all this equipment would allow her to outfit another strike force if she needed to and still increase her money by a noticeable amount. But she needed to make sure that she wasn't going to catch any flack for what he was doing whilst he was hinged as her. If the council knew about his transformation abilities then they would probably lock him up in a dark hole and throw away the key. It bypassed most basic security on the citadel, and could allow him to incriminate almost anyone, which would doubly worry the council given his rather cool attitude towards them. Hi Taicho, I'm sorry. I will definitely check in with you if I can in future. Not exactly a straight up promise but it would do for now, the results far outweighed the potential cost. Commander? The council are on the line and they say it can't wait. Shall I patch them through or are you going to the meeting room for a face-to-face -face chat? As tempting as it was to see their faces if this was the meeting she thought it was, Shepard couldn't be bothered to traipse up there for what would undoubtedly be a very short call. Patch them through Joker. I doubt they will be long. And of course there was the other advantage. Jane thought to herself as she moved to her chair whose position was optimized for audio quality. A bit of backup never hurt anyone. Ready to go Jane Taishu? Naruto had moved up behind her with his usual silent footstep, the young ninja obviously just as eager to hear what the council had to offer. Seeing the call was from three separate lines, not surprising given the time of day, Jane had an amusing if slightly unrealistic thought even as she pressed the accept button. Would the other two believe her if she claimed she couldn't connect to the Turian counselor due to technical difficulties? Hashtag percent carat asterisk plus equals. We are full Commander Shepard. The words from Presley would probably surprise most people who had seen the Normandy. The ship, while small for a frigate, was still large enough to fit an entire marine detachment and their transports on top of its normal loadout. It was almost the same size as the MSV Ontario that was currently floating across the readouts in front of her. So we have filled the cargo bay? Not surprising given that we picked up those two troop transports and several tons of Thresher Maw meat from Edelis. It would have passed most people by that any part of a Thresher Maw was useful, but after an offhand comment from Rex about the meat being a sought-after Krogan delicacy, Jane had saw an opportunity. Not just the cargo bay, that has the transports and the light mako you got from those pirates along with the meat and some of the weapons, but I am talking most of the rest of the space on the ship as well. I have already had to fill half the engine room and the med base supply room with the weapons and other equipment that your teams have acquired, not to mention the thresher maw acid that Naruto was so determined we harvest. Ah, uh, so a different level of full to what she had thought he meant. Jane wasn't really offended by the slightly accusatory tone in Presley's voice. She had been a hoarder for years and a miser for even longer than that. The only time she let things go was for money. And if she wanted to try and justify it objectively, Considering the amount of supplies that many of the Terminus pirate bases had, if she had left them there she was just facilitating another group's easy start in their shady careers. Back to the Citadel, then Presley. Whilst we could try one of the local colonies I think we need to get the bodies back to Kahoku as soon as possible. Presley saluted and moved away to give Joker the new order, leaving Jane to open her own calm channel to the member of the crew that would be most likely to help her a little further. Gurus, can I talk to you regarding the Citadel for a minute please? Where are you based now? 
The question was as much for her own benefit as it was being polite. Gurus had originally taken up residence in the cargo bay along with Ashley and Rex. But if they were as full as Presley was alluding to then she doubted that was still the case. I'm currently in the mess commander though Rex wanted to talk to you about our sleeping arrangement anyway. So do you want to meet us here? Rex had probably been much less polite about the damn thing. But Gurus was remarkably soft-spoken given his dossier and experience in CCC. Of course. We are heading back to the Citadel now so that we can clear the hold sooner rather than later, but I guess this is more of a question of long-term cargo space. There was a grunt of approval, probably from Rex, as Jane tried to think of a way round the problem. I will be down in a moment, Gurus. I just need to contact someone with an idea I have just had. The Ontario was slightly damaged from the Guardian laser fire used to disable its engines and though it would be stretching things a bit thin given the Normandy was already running a light human crew. She had someone who excelled at dealing with manpower issues. Naruto, how do you feel about learning to crew a ship? Hashtag percent carat asterisk plus equals. It had not been an easy return to the Citadel, but with Presley piloting the Ontario and two other crew managing Naruto and his clones it had been a lot easier to pull off than she had thought it might be. Alerting the Alliance to the damage to the Ontario's engines, Jane was pleased to hear of a quick response allowing her to use one of the shipyard docks to land the Ontario for repair, whilst the Normandy landed and most of the crew were involved in unloading the various equipment and items from it. Gurus had known exactly who they could sell most of the good weapons and armor to, CCC in fact as they were constantly having to obtain new equipment to replace broken, stolen or lost equipment of their own. Executor Paulin had been remarkably reasonable about the whole thing as well and Jane had walked away with a confirmation of sale and CCC crews already on their way to take the items away from the Normandy docks. The Thresher Maw meat had been a bit more difficult to part with, taking Naruto a couple of hours to find several restaurants and bars in the lower wards that catered quite heavily towards Krogan, though once she made them aware of quite how much Thresher Maw meat she had there was quite some competition between them to take it off her hands. Supposedly thresher meat was quite hardy when it came to preservation and difficult to get hold of, so the restaurants were obviously trying to buy up the meat to give them stock for some time to come. So she had made more than enough to pay the alliance for the repairs to the Ontario, as another ship was very quickly agreed to be the best solution for their cargo problem, but now she had to consider getting a crew for the ship. She had asked the others and most had been unable to help though Tali had raised the point that there were dozens of Quarians on the Citadel that would jump at the chance for work, even if it was something as menial and crewing and running a salvage ship in the wake of the Normandy. They have all been truthful as far as I can tell Shepard Taishu, though with their masks on all the time it would be quite hard to tell if they didn't exaggerate every little body gesture to make up for it. Which had lead to where they were now, Tali having spread the word that they were looking for a crew and would accept Quarians meant that the office Naruto had given the address for applicants to go to had been packed by the time Jane had arrived to see who had turned up. She got the feeling that the office was probably another one of the things he had acquired during his time on the Citadel. But given he hadn't told her anything about it other than it was legally rented out, Jane didn't push any harder given it meant that they didn't have to use the Normandy's hangar. Well, I think we only need twenty to crew the ship and collect the salvage, so we are going to have to pick out the best. You and Tali got any recommendations? Naruto nodded slowly and pointed over to a group that Tali was stood with off to one side, maybe thirty or so of them. Tali-chan says these ones have particular skills that you would be looking for Shepherd Taishu, whilst all Quarians have experienced ships side these actually served on ship crews in various fields. Jane nodded though it did pull at her heartstrings to see so many people who were obviously so desperate for any kind of work that they responded to what was essentially a vague word-of-mouth job advert, especially given she would be sending most of them away without anything. Everyone, thank you for coming to the interviews. As we have kept you for some time, food is served. The tall blonde woman that made that announcement, who looked suspiciously like Naruto but female without the whisker marks, announced this as she and two other people brought in packs of dextro paste. The Quarians seemed torn between caution and shock, obviously not used to this kind of hospitality from someone other than their own race. It took Tali walking forwards, and rather awkwardly feeding one of the packs into the complex apparatus that worked to move the food to her mouth without breaking sterilization, 
to make the other Quarians realize that this wasn't some kind of trick. Jane turned a knowing glance in Naruto's direction, the young man merely shrugging as the two understood exactly why he had gone out and bought enough food to feed two hundred people on a whim without the need for words. Now knowing his past as an orphan, one that was not well liked if the story regarding this Mizuki was anything near the norm, Jane saw his actions in a different light. Despite his obvious reluctance to get close to anyone other than herself, it was the things like this and when he stood in front of Tali at the council, that revealed that despite his irritating and sarcastic humor he was not only a genocide survivor as he wanted to portray himself. Watching as he blushed and stammered a protest as Tali glomped him, the young Quarian also seemingly in on the secret of where the food had come from, Jane couldn't help but smile as a fellow orphan struggled to accept the probably unexpected affection and appreciation. Now she knew exactly what to do the next time he tried to goad her with a comment about trying to date her. Hashtag percent carrot asterisk plus equals. It was quiet aboard the Normandy, something Tali was still not at all used to as she walked the halls aimlessly, a mixture of excitement and longing mixing in her stomach and preventing her sleeping for the moment. The giddiness of being able to help some of her own people on their pilgrimage, even if it was only on Shepard's behalf and only twenty-three of them, was something that gave her a warm feeling that she really didn't want to try and shake any time soon. Though, with that feeling came the longing that she couldn't help but feel even though it made her feel extremely guilty every time she thought about it. Despite all that Shepard had done for her in taking her on her ship and letting her be part of her team, Tali could tell that Jane didn't trust her any more than she seemed to trust Gurus or Rex. Whilst most Quarians weren't very good with facial expressions or body language, her father had been very insistent in her learning some psychology before leaving the flotilla and the signs were there, even if Shepard didn't realize she was doing it. It was understandable, they had only met a week ago after all, but it was the sort of feeling that subconsciously filtered down throughout the rest of the crew. The feeling of distrust was painfully clear to her, and was one of the reasons she kept herself to engineering during the day when most of the crew were active. Engineer Adams was a lot nicer to her after she helped with the engines a few times. So now that there was another ship accompanying Shepard, crewed by her own kind who were beyond thankful at the opportunity she had offered them, Tali couldn't help but want to request permission to join them. The feeling was quickly squashed once more though, after all there were the upsides to being on a ship like the Normandy, especially given its rather exotic crew. Tali Chan, are you okay? The sudden question brought Tali tumbling to a stop, both mentally and physically as the subject of her thoughts spoke to her from where he was doing pull-ups on a makeshift workout area in the corner of the cargo bay. Ah, yes, Naruto. Sorry, just lost in my thoughts. Her subconscious must have been following her thoughts more than she could have imagined if her feet had taken her to the one place that Naruto was likely to be found. She only hoped that he couldn't tell she was embarrassed doing her best not to exhibit her embarrassment physically as was standard between Quarians, doing her best to think of something to talk about quickly before she got any worse. No need to apologize, Tali-chan. I do that a lot, especially when I think about ramen. Swinging himself forwards, Naruto let go at the apex of his swing and flipped through air and landed less than two feet of her, causing her to jump slightly in shock as he stood before smiling apologetically. Ah, uh, sorry, Tali-chan. I should probably have given you a little warning there. For the second time in a minute Tali's mind stopped thinking ahead, as she couldn't stop herself taking in the image in front of her. Stood only in a pair of standard fatigue pants, Tali could definitely say that Naruto was the most well-built man she had ever seen topless this close, though a rather snide part of her brain was quick to point out he was the only man. Well-defined muscles were easily visible on his stocky frame, but he wasn't hulking as she thought the phrase was. Her blush faded slightly when she started paying attention to the scars that littered his arms and chest. In some places there were signs of scars formed on top of other scars. Tali-chan? Oh right, not really used to people being bothered by this still. Stepping off to grab his plain white t-shirt, Tali mentally complained even as she did her best to recover what little composure she had left. So, is there anything you wanted me for Tali-chan? Or would you prefer me to leave you to it? I was done for the night now if you wanted to have a go. Tali shook her head rapidly. Having seen Naruto working out in the area on several occasions there was no way she was going to embarrass herself by doing her training with him still there. 
No thank you Naruto. I don't want to try and work out this late at night. Would probably mean I would be awake all night. I just wanted to thank you for helping my people today with the Ontario. I know most people would have tried to get a human crew instead. I will just go and work on Chattaka a little more. A good save rather than the real reason, but the frown that crossed Naruto's face implied she hadn't pulled it off as well as she would like to think she had. Ano, but shouldn't you work on your close quarter skills as well Tali-chan? What happens if someone catches you unarmed and too close for you to sabotage them? Whilst normally Tali would have taken offense at what was an insinuation that Naruto thought she would be useless in close combat, she had talked to Rex after their mission on the Citadel and knew that even the veteran Krogan approved of the young man's martial abilities, which was a big compliment from a Krogan. I would keep them busy until I made enough space to draw my weapon or sabotage them without being caught in the blast radius. Not the most confident of answers, and being honest with herself Tali knew that if she got into a melee with anyone that had more than a modicum of melee ability, the chances of her getting out of that fight alive, let alone without suit damage, were very low indeed. Show me then. Gone was the cheerful expression and relaxed postured, Naruto sliding into a stance she didn't recognize with a deadpan look of concentration on his face. But Naruto. She didn't get any further than that. Naruto moving quickly forwards and throwing a left jab at her face. It was obvious that he was holding back considerably, the stiffness of his body showing that it wanted to move faster and that he was doing his best to hold it in check, but Tali still only just managed to bring her arm up to block the attack. Even with Naruto pulling his punches her arm smarted as Naruto shifted once more, speaking to her as he went to another attack. Your legs are too close together. Widen your stance to help with the stability of your defense. It took Tali a moment to realize he was being serious, ducking a roundhouse kick that would have taken her straight out of the fight if it had connected before she did so, smiling to herself despite the situation as Naruto nodded approvingly. Do not block attacks if at all possible, deflect or avoid the attack altogether to throw your opponent off balance. And so she ducked and dodged as best she could, Though there were still far too many attacks that she had been forced to block, the aching in her arms and legs smarting every time she moved even as Naruto eventually got her to switch to offense, blocking each and every one of her attacks like it was the easiest thing in the world. She didn't know quite how long they were at it, not having had her HUD display on in order to conserve her suit's energy, but by the end of it she was drenched in sweat and aching from every joint. Despite this though, she felt happy for the first time that evening as Naruto relaxed and smiled approvingly at her. Well done Tali-chan, you have improved significantly there. The warm feeling that had first appeared when Naruto had stepped in to defend her from the council resurfaced at the smile. And even though Tali wasn't sure that she would actually be able to make it back to her bunk, she knew she would sleep well tonight. And perhaps, as much as her body was already complaining at the idea, she would see if she could turn this into a more regular training session. After all, a few bruises and aching muscles would be totally worth it if somebody did ever try and take her on in close combat only for her to surprise them with her new skills. That, and another chance to hang around with Naruto wasn't something she would pass up if she could avoid it. Chapter 8 It still only counts as one. Jane Taishu, I don't want you to take this the wrong way. Naruto was forced to pause his attempt at conversation as the world hadn't quite stopped spinning enough for him to be comfortable talking, unless he wanted possible throwing up to go with it. What's the matter, your first vehicle combat mission too much for you? Jane's grin as she exited the Mako did nothing to improve Naruto's mood. No, the geth I could handle, even those big walker things of theirs. What came far closer to killing me was, well I wouldn't call it driving, as I'm sure even I could do better than that, and I've never been behind the wheel before. That comment, which he had to admit was more cutting than usual even for him, merely caused Jane to chuckle before indicating around her. You are more than welcome to walk next time Naruto, and besides, you don't see Rex or Tali complaining. There was a disgruntled bark from the Krogan warlord even as he debunked from the Mako and shook his head repeatedly. I wasn't complaining as I think near-death situations are good for the soul, though I will admit that's the most roughed up I have been since that time on Omega are good times. And the little one isn't complaining because she knows if she does open her mouth she will vomit. And trust me, 
cleaning vomit from the inside of your suit is not a fun job. The fact that Rex only tended to find fighting, training and well, fighting fun was usually meant his opinions on matters were usually defunct, but as Tali's upper body flopped out of the mako and she looked in their direction with a rather pitiful moan. Keela, why are we still spinning? After a few moments more she seemed to regain enough awareness to actually get fully out of the mako, though her footing was still a little unsteady as she dropped down next to Naruto, who quickly grabbed her arm to help her stabilize. And Rex, why am I the little one? Naruto is smaller than me. Tali was obviously trying to distract herself from her queasiness, but Naruto still gave her a playful jab with his elbow as Rex chuckled before pointing at Naruto. That's because he can take out three armed men with just his fists. That's the kind of person you don't want to call little. Not to his face anyways. The three of them chuckled before Jane coughed in warning. That will do. Let's get up to the ruins as fast as we can. The Geth are here so we don't know what we are going to face. Naruto, I want you to scout ahead. Do not engage unless you are sure you can handle it quietly. Naruto nodded, catching the instruction not to use clones unless he had to. Jane clenching her fists as she spoke to relay the message. Whilst there were a few people who knew the extent of his abilities, the less he showed them off the better. Hi Jane Taishu. And with that he was off, moving lightly up the ravine path as the others carried on speaking, stopping when he was out of sight to activate the most useful jutsu Erosenin had taught him. The transparency jutsu was technically only classed as a derank jutsu, but Erosenin had modified his version of it substantially to aid in his peeping, and it was the modifications that deadened sounds and cloaked the body's heat signature that made it so useful against the metal men. Naruto hadn't tested it on the Geth yet, but as he rounded the next turn and came almost face to face with a Geth trooper, positioned there as some kind of sentry no doubt. Given the lack of reaction as Naruto stopped in his tracks and fell into a fighting stance, the trooper hadn't seen him so Naruto crept round the back of the trooper before summoning his spear. Fast movements dispelled the technique, which was why Aero Senen was usually caught after someone got suspicious, and summoning Kushina from his seals caused the jutsu to fail in a similar manner. The trooper didn't notice though, allowing Naruto to prepare himself, before impaling the trooper through the back of the head with a single stroke. The geth collapsed with a clunk, Naruto quickly resealing Kushina and reactivating the transparency jutsu, moving on quickly to check that there were no other geth in the area that might come and investigate the sound. Luckily no one seemed to have noticed, so Naruto reached up to his ear to report in. Jane Taishu, they had a guard set just up the path, it's down but from the looks of things I doubt that is the last of them. Moving up to find the camp. Jane was smirking. He could tell that even when he wasn't able to see her face, he could tell. It's almost like they knew we were coming. Good work, Naruto. Keep us informed. Resisting the urge to growl at his commander's tone, Naruto merely carried moving forwards up towards the plateau their intel highlighted as being the research camp they were hoping to find Benizia's daughter. He dealt with two more geth, who were waiting near the top of the ravine path in obvious position for an ambush, before reaching the top. The camp was slightly downhill from where he had emerged, amidst the two-story ruins which had been the original find, allowing him to assess what was waiting for them before the others arrived. Creeping forwards, Naruto counted at least a dozen guest soldiers, stood around corpses of what must have been the research team. Shepherd Taishu, I am at the camp. Naruto paused as his sixth sense twinged a moment before his ears picked up a scrabbling sound. It took a moment, far too long given his past but Naruto realized a little too late that the sound was coming from above him. Throwing caution to the wind, Naruto leapt backwards despite the fact doing so would blow his cover, but was just a fraction of a second too slow. The bright red laser slammed into his armor, bypassing his shields like they weren't even there, his dodge meaning that he only caught half of the beam as the rest burned a hole in the ground. They've spotted me, don't know how but I am pulling back, keep an eye up high people. Naruto didn't turn back to try and spot his attacker, too busy dodging and ducking around the fire that quickly began to strafe him from the other geth in the area. The geth dropship that had been plaguing them since their arrival on them appearing on the horizon several moments later. Naruto, status report, given the dropship and the weapon's fire we can hear, you've kicked the hornet's nest this time. Are you safe? 
The concern in Jane's voice was touching given her general blasé attitude, but Naruto had bigger things to think about at that moment, making it into cover by the ravine entrance just in time, left arm in agony from where the laser had hit him. Just fucking peachy. I always enjoy getting shot and then having a tank get dropped in on my position, so the sooner you guys get here the sooner we can start the party. He knew he would probably regret the sarcasm and potty mouth later, but when living with a bunch of seasoned ninja, swearing was the best possible vice he could have picked up. The tank he was referring to was another one of those geth walkers, the massive contraption rearing up in its now familiar manner to rain plasma upon what little cover he had. Leaping up, Naruto shifted away from the area the others would be arriving from into some of the ruins, hopefully this would prevent them from being pinned down. Two minutes out Naruto, just keep yourself alive understand? We can talk about embarrassing Tali with your language, and how you are going to make it up to her later. There was a muffled exclamation, probably from Tali about Shepard's comment, which actually distracted Naruto from the pain slightly as he ducked under the ball of plasma that had just erupted from the walker in front of him. Drawing one of his pistols as he heard the light skittering noise above him again, Naruto's paranoia proved spot on as he saw a gray-skinned geth clamber round the corner on the ceiling, I stock glowing in the same shade of red as the laser that had injured him earlier. With Naruto knowing it was coming now, the shot was relatively easy to dodge, leaving the thing attempting to backpedal rapidly away from him. Raising the pistol with a smirk on his face, Naruto couldn't help but feel a little vengeful, but that was all right in his book. People who were vengeful usually had the best arcs in the anime that he had read as a child, so that meant he was just becoming that little bit more awesome, right? Pound dollar percent carrot and asterisk. Damn Naruto, you really were not happy with these guys, were you? By the time she and the others had made it to the top of the canyon the fighting had been pretty much over, only the Geth walker still standing as Naruto flitted from cover to cover firing potshots at it with his pistols. You have one of them sneak up on you and shoot you in the back Jane Taishu. I assure you it will do wonders for your outlook on the situation. Jane couldn't help but smile at her subordinate's acerbic reply. Stress really did bring out a different person from underneath that charismatic and friendly front that he put up to everyone. She found she rather enjoyed the difference. You did this whilst injured? You keep impressing me human, though I suppose your regeneration and backup organs helped. Rex's comment would have gotten some odd looks from the other three if they hadn't been advancing forwards whilst firing on the walker, so instead there was just an awkward silence for a few moments before Jane decided she should clear up the confusion. Rex, humans don't have defunct organs or fast regeneration. The Krogan warlord paused behind a rock and looked around at the half a dozen geth corpses, confusion shifting to delight a moment later, raising himself over the top of the rock to utilize his shotgun's carnage ability at the walker. Oh, that just makes things even better. No more scouting brat, you and I are going to have a proper contest. As Rex vaulted the cover and charged towards the now beleaguered walker, Jane realized that this contest was probably linked to levels of devastation and kill counts. Meaning that these ruins would probably not survive the coming onslaught. Then she thought about it for a moment and grinned to herself, looking round the camp at all the leftover supplies and geth parts even as the walker keeled over from Rex's body slamming into one of its legs. Let the boys have their fun for now, there were other things she could focus on instead. Shepherd to the Normandy. I want you to come into atmosphere and provide cover whilst the Ontario collects the geth salvage we have built up along with any other useful items they find along the way. You will need to send Beta Team to collect the Mako. As we've left it at the bottom of the hill the camp is on, we will proceed inside to grab the target, assuming that Naruto and Rex didn't end up trying to off her to finish their competition. Competition Commander? Jane looked over to where Rex had just blasted the walker repeatedly in the eye, even as it tried to stand before falling limply to the ground. Naruto having moved on towards the entrance to the ruins with Tali following somewhat confusedly behind. Probably better if you don't ask Joker. Naruto gunned down the first geth who tried to exit the ruins, shouting something to Rex that she didn't quite hear, but the warlord's roared reply was almost terrifying. What do you mean it only counts as one? Pound dollar percent carrot and asterisk. Hello, can you hear me out there? I am trapped and need help. Naruto had seen her long before he had gotten close enough for her to call out to him, 
half a dozen of his clones hidden along the walls of the large cavern they had descended into just in case of a trap, his gaze settling on her and confirming that this was indeed their target. Dr. Tsoni-san, I presume? A good idea with the shield, these geth haven't been much fun to deal with. Having cleared the geth in the camp with a rather hurried and judicious use of clones, Naruto had not expected or enjoyed the following contest with Rex, the Krogan quickly catching up to his score in the dark tunnels. The Krogan seemed to enjoy the contest even if Naruto was severely restricted in what he could do, and the geth had been much less of a problem once the Krogan had waded into them. Satisfied that the team would distract the remaining geth, Naruto had slipped off despite Rex's protests, though the Krogan was placated by the opportunity to kill most of the remaining geth himself. Judging by the large piece of equipment the geth had been moving into position, Naruto had been right to move ahead, dealing with them had been easy even when concealing his chakra powers. This Dr. Tsoni made a slight indication to the way her body seemed to be fixed in place in the air. This wasn't actually the idea. It seems to be some kind of Prothean security device, must have activated when I activated the barrier to protect myself. To Naruto's slight surprise Dr. Tsoni seemed more curious about her situation than concerned or worried, her face similar to when Naruto had asked Sakura or one of the others a question they had to think about before answering. Well Dr. Tsoni, I think we can have a look at how it works later, let me just let the rest of my team know I have found you. The Aseri didn't even react, obviously still mulling over her thoughts on the security system, so Naruto activated his comms unit. Jane Taishu I have found Sony-san, if you can stop Rex from just trying to kill everything that moves and head back to the fork where I left you, I have marked the path and made sure there are no active geth. Using clones to map out the ruins had been far quicker than trying to do it by himself, it was just common sense. Very good Naruto. Rex just found a larger red one to play with but I am sure he will be finished with it soon. Is Dr. Tsoni unharmed? The unspoken question of whether she had been working with or hiding from the geth went unsaid. She is currently stuck in some kind of stasis, thing behind an energy barrier Tai Cho. The geth were trying to break into where she currently is but hadn't succeeded from what I could tell. The lack of descriptive words Naruto had for what he was seeing was really starting to annoy him and he resolved to find a dictionary, and see if it could help improve his word range. Okay Naruto, we are on our way, keep an eye out for any stragglers. Naruto chuckled as he heard Rex shout something in the background of Shepard's line, but the Krogan didn't come on to tell Naruto what he had said. Oh, I am sorry, I got a little distracted. The Geth. You must be careful out there. I was just doing some investigation when the warning of a Geth attack came from the camp. I hid in here and activated the barriers before they got down here. I knew the barriers would keep them out. But the geth. Beyond the veil? Can you believe it? Naruto nodded to himself even as he considered his reply. Her excitement was too genuine and too out of the blue for her to know what the geth had done on Eden Prime, meaning that it was becoming beyond unlikely that she was linked with her mother and Saren. I can believe it, Sony-san. I have killed thirty-seven of them to reach you. I would also advise you do not show such excitement when Jane Taishi gets here. The Geth attacked a planet called Eden Prime which we helped clear before coming here. A lot of humans died in the attack. The look of anguish that entered Liara's face was so genuine that Naruto actually felt bad for his blunt warning. I apologize. I did not mean to be excited at the Geth's actions. It is just a wonderful scientific opportunity to learn about a race that haven't left the Persis Veil in over 300 years. And may I ask, what is your name, human? And please call me Liara. Nobody has referred to me by my surname in several decades. Naruto was still getting used to the idea that some of the races in the galaxy considered a period equal to a human's life expectancy to the equivalent of a short period of time, managing to focus on her question instead. The name is Uzumaki Naruto Liara-san. And I am sure that given the number we have taken down so far you can join Tali-chan in investigating the remains. But first I think Jane Taishu will have some questions for you when she gets here. So how do I turn this barrier off so I can come give you a hand? Liara looked at him in confusion for a moment before tilting her head to indicate an interface on the inside of the barrier. Ah, that could be slightly more problematic than Naruto had anticipated. No matter, just because the Geth hadn't been able to work out a way and didn't mean he couldn't. 
His optimism lasted until Jane and the others arrived. The only progress he had made was working out that he really didn't want to try and force his way through the barrier physically. He could have probably used the body replacement jutsu with a clone, but he didn't want to reveal his abilities, especially given Liara's fascination with new technology slash races she didn't yet understand. No luck, Naruto? Jane's question prompted a subconscious growl of frustration from him. He would have had a much easier time if he could just use some jutsu. No Jane Taishu, though Liara-san does tell me that the thing a couple of floors down that the Geth were trying to set up is a mining laser? Not quite sure what that is exactly, but she seems pretty sure that it should work. Jane looked at him for a moment before gesturing to Rex and Tali. You two go and secure the mining laser whilst I have a chat with Dr. Tsoni. Naruto can make sure there are no stragglers following us up. Rex grouched about interrupting his contest again, but moved off a moment later with Tali in his wake. I don't know what Naruto has told you yet, but I am Commander Jane Shepard of the Council Spectres, in pursuit of a rogue specter by the name of Saren who has allied with the Geth to bring about the return of a race called the Reapers. Your mother is known to be working with him, and given the Geth attack on your dig site and their efforts to get through to you, you are obviously involved in all this somehow. The only question is, which side? Naruto was always slightly surprised when Jane put her work face on, but Liara seemed more confused than anything else, which made sense with what he had gleaned from their interactions thus far. I am not on anybody's side, I have no idea what you are talking about. I haven't spoken to Benizia in years, decades in fact. We are nothing alike. I promise I know nothing of what she is up to, please just get me out of here. Nothing deceitful in her tone of voice, though body language was hard to discern when she could only move her head, Naruto giving a small nod when Jane glanced at him to give his taciturn support. It's not as if he wouldn't be keeping an eye on her all the time anyway, and given his particular set of skills, Naruto was sure if she did turn out to be a plant then he would catch misdeeds quickly enough. Very well, since Naruto believes you I will do so as well. Naruto would you be able to get inside without us needing the mining laser? That sort of question meant that Jane was giving him permission to use his abilities if he needed to, though Naruto was still wary of showing off too many skills. Ha, I think I do. Disappearing from Liara's sight by taking a few quick steps to the left, Naruto motioned for one of his hidden clones to try and kawarimi into the room. The clone performed the seal and then there was a small thud as the loose debris he had seen inside the room landed where the clone had been hidden. Jumping up to where the clone had been, so as to avoid the eventual questions of how there were two of him hanging around, Naruto activated his calm so that he could speak just to Shepard. Jane Taishu, my clone is inside the tower, and I will switch with him if the opportunity arises. Hopefully Liara-san can walk him through deactivating that shield. Otherwise, we might need that mining laser after all. Pound dollar percent carrot and asterisk. Surrender or don't. That would be more fun. Jane shook her head. The day had been long enough as it was without the bloodthirsty Krogan and his guest sidekicks trying to spoil the end of it. I don't think so, you see. The good doctor doesn't seem happy to see you and I really do not have time for this. In fact, Jane was surprised to see the previously passive and polite Asari look positively murderous at the sight of the Krogan. Bionics flaring slightly as she spat out a reply of her own. You killed Sierra and Fox in front of me, monster. The Krogan just shrugged at the aggression as several more Geth flitted into the room. You wouldn't come out. I tried to persuade you. Not my problem. Saren wants you, though. And what Saren wants, he gets. Obviously that line was meant to be witty slash intimidating, but the attempted effect was lessened by an argument Jane could hear getting louder from behind her. He should be worth at least five. He is the obvious leader of this entire group. Naruto's rather loud comment drew everyone's attention even as Rex snorted and shook his head. If the walker only counts as one, he only counts as one. You can't have it both ways, brat. Besides, he looks rather wimpy for Krogan in all honesty. That caused the other Krogan to growl at the insult, gesturing to the surrounding Geth. Kill them all, spare the... The Krogan didn't get any further as he was hit by twin carnage rounds from Rex and Shepard, staggering back just in time to catch Naruto barreling into him with full force. The Geth raised their weapons but Rex was already amongst them, 
Krogan's strength and body weight sending one group to the ground whilst the other was being pelted by Tali and Liara. Discharging her shotgun into a Geth trooper who hadn't made it into cover yet, blowing the thing backwards off the edge of the damaged platform, Shepard saw Naruto fire three more rounds from his shotgun into the prone Krogan before moving off to flank the remaining Geth. Even without his abilities, the young man was doing remarkably well considering the technological disadvantages he had, though his reflexes definitely helped. 47 Rex And there are only four left so you can't catch up. Jane's admiration of the ninja's maturity dropped slightly at the obvious provocation, shouldering her weapon as an enraged Rex barreled into two of the remaining enemies. She really didn't want to end up catching the fallout from Rex having lost the contest he had devised. Chapter 9 a test of endurance. You do realize the armor is probably worse off than I am, right? And stop with the damn needles woman. Naruto knew that he could probably be a little less bratty about the whole thing. After all, he had been shot and this was the ship's doctor. But in his opinion, he didn't need the attention. After the fall of Kanoha medics and other medical staff had been in short supply, and given his regeneration ability Naruto had always been the one to volunteer out of treatment whenever there had been combat or other medical injuries and illnesses that had arisen. His preference that medics spent their time looking after others less fortunate than him a little hard for him to shake. The fact that he wasn't particularly fond of needles, of any form, after the battle and wave with Haku definitely had nothing to do with it. Honest. Just because your surface wounds have healed, which is still very impressive given the short time span, doesn't mean that your health and general well-being should not be fully investigated, Mr. Uzumaki. We have no records to go off in regards to your unique makeup, so it would be best if I created some now, rather than if you do get seriously injured and I have to guess at how to treat you. The words were stern and made it very clear that Dr. Chukwas was not going to take no as an answer, Naruto's sigh of defeat getting a laugh from Shepard as she watched the little exchange from her desk. They were performing the checkup in Shepard's room for two reasons. Firstly because it was a secure location that they could talk about Naruto freely without any of the others hearing under the guise of a debrief from Shepard, and also so that they could sort out the aftermath of the council report at the same time. The council had tried to insist that Shepard use the conference room to contact them, but given that was now where she was bunking Gurus and Rex as well as to put her foot down with them, Shepard insisted that an audio conference in her office was not only easier but more secure now. You better not let any of the council hear about how easily Dr. Chukwas can win arguments with you Naruto. They might try and hire her off of us to act as their ambassador solely to you. Though given how impressed they were with our mission I don't think we need to worry about that for the time being. Even the Turian couldn't find anything to complain about and make it stick. Not for lack of trying of course. Everything ranging from the deaths of the rest of the dig team to Liara not being handed over to the council in chains had been brought up by the prickly representative, Shepard listening with amusement as the Aseri line went mute for a couple of minutes and then the Turian stopped being so blatant with his attempts to sabotage her. Obviously the level-headed ones in the council were trying to avoid antagonizing her if they could help it. We will obviously have to cause them some more trouble in the future Jane-chan can have them thinking we will be good little minions all of the time. Jane's grin widened slightly and Naruto responded in kind. He had to admit he had been damn lucky to have ended up being woken up when he had been. If he had been stuck with someone like Kaden as a leader he would probably have mutinied by now. Given it is you Naruto, I don't think we will need to try very hard. Speaking of potential trouble, how is Liara doing? Naruto thought for a moment reviewing what the clone he had following Liara had sent him when it had dispersed. It's only been a few hours Jane-chan, she has been resting in the med bay. Given that she had been in that barrier for a couple of days I doubt that she will be doing anything else in the near future. Presley is watching the data streams from the access port you have given her. If she does go on the extranet for any reason we will know, though I imagine he does the same for all of us non-alliance personnel. His educated guests barely phased Jane who shrugged unapologetically at him before smiling once more. Standard procedure, especially given the nature of the Normandy. Command are creating non-disclosure agreements for all of you, which I imagine will cause Tali to become quite the annoyance when she hears about it, but this is experimental and classified technology so I think we can talk her round. Naruto winced as he already knew where this was heading. And by we you mean I will talk Tali-chan round? 
Do you not like me all of a sudden, Taicho? Don't forget I am one of those non-alliance members you are meant to be watching after all. What would command say if they heard I was doing your negotiations for you? His ploy to get out of being the messenger nearly worked, Jane's face shifting to her deep thought expression for a few seconds before the proverbial light bulb came on, and she glared at him half-heartedly. Nice try, Naruto, but you are still talking to her. She has certainly gelled with you a lot better than she has the rest of the human crew. You can make it clear it's from me, of course, but I think it will be better coming from you. Naruto nodded. The logic was sound even if he didn't like the end result. Hi, Jane-chan. When the doctor has finished trying to kill I mean heal me I will go talk to her. We are due another training session as it is. The fact that Tali had approached him about further close combat training really pleased Naruto. He rather liked the shy Quarian, and he also found he rather enjoyed teaching as well. Well, despite the fact that your ungratefulness makes me want to run another batch of tests just to annoy you, I think I am done for now. So, you are free to go, though if I hear any more whining the next time you are in my care, I will start on the invasive diagnostic tests. Damn, Dr. Chukwas was scary when she wanted to be, Naruto quickly deciding it was best to give up the fight rather than risk the veteran doctor actually trying to go through with her threat. Hi, hi, I will be good. Naruto did his best to ignore Jane's continued chuckles as he stood and made his way to the door. Now he just had to find Tali-chan to arrange the training without Rex finding out and trying to join in. Pound dollar percent carrot and asterisk. It was quiet aboard the ship, something Liara greatly appreciated as opposed to the, the much more crowded and raucous atmosphere she had often experienced whilst traveling with Benizia in her youth. The quiet allowed her to think without distraction, and thinking was something she had been doing ever since she had been brought aboard the human ship two days before. Whilst young for her kind, Benizia had raised her to be methodical and calculating in everything she did and Liara had found at least one of those things to be useful enough to keep after finally managing to move away from her and on to her own things. Certainly her logical approach had helped in persuading the Salarian in charge of the dig on the rum to allow her to be a part of the team, though given what happened that could be taken as both a good and a bad thing. I would also advise you do not show such excitement when Jane Taishi gets here, the Geth attacked a planet called Eden Prime which we helped clear before coming here. A lot of humans died in the attack. The words of young human soldier who had found and rescued her came to the forefront of her mind, something they had been doing a lot since they boarded the ship as she tried her best not to think about the rest of her captivity or the actions of the Krogan who had come with the Geth. She knew she probably owed him an apology for her ill choice of enthusiasm and words, he didn't seem to have mentioned them to his boss despite the fact that they could be taken as her supporting the Geth, though she had been aiming and ahhing about how to do it. Human culture was something she was not particularly experienced in, having devoted herself to her Prothean research before humans even existed to the council races, and the extranet videos she had watched whilst she recovered hadn't helped much. Dr. Tsoni? Drawn from her thoughts by someone speaking behind her, Liara turned around hastily. How had she been so distracted that she hadn't noticed someone come in? Oh, I am sorry, Tali, wasn't it? I am afraid I was lost in my thoughts and didn't hear you come in. What can I do for you? The Quarian girl didn't seem too bothered by her social awkwardness, thank the goddess. Her posture relaxed and friendly even as she replied. Not a problem. You have had a lot to think about, I am sure. I was just here to offer a tour of the ship. From the sounds of it, you are going to be here a while. It certainly helped me settle in a little when I joined up. It was something that Liara had been wondering, how there were a group of aliens aboard a very human spaceship, but she had merely put it down as a specter thing until now. A tour? Are you sure that would be okay? I mean, given the commander's concerns. Jane Shepard, the first human specter, would normally have been a piece of living history that Liara would be dying to meet. The woman had been very professional but Liara could tell she didn't trust her and probably wouldn't for some time to come. In fact, Liara was surprised she didn't have a guard following her at all times, she knew her extranet activity was being monitored and approved given how long some of the loading times were after all. Naruto has given you the all clear, and if he believes you so will Shepard even if it is just provisionally, I just would make sure not to prove either of them wrong in that belief. The young human had such sway over a specter? 
She knew that Commander Shepard had checked her initial story with him before letting him out, and from what he said he had very good people reading skills, but she had barely spoken to the man since then. Such a level of trust made her wonder if she had significantly underestimated the man. Perhaps his claim about the number of Geth he had killed hadn't been an idle boast. Surprising, isn't it? Though when you get to know him a little better, I think you will come to understand why. Despite how he acts, he is quite brilliant in his own way. Now, shall we? Obviously, her thoughts had been easier to read than Liara thought. A small blush rising on her face as she chose to ignore the first question and nod to the second, not trusting her voice in case she said something that could be interpreted badly. You're too kind, Tali Chan, though it's not going to get me to go any easier on you in training later. The rather amused voice of the subject of their conversation from behind Tali made both of them freeze up though Liara was very glad she hadn't said anything now, as she would probably be as embarrassed as Tali was. Naruto, what have I told you about sneaking up on me? Embarrassment was quick to turn into outrage for the Quarian as she turned to face the new arrival, who seemed content just to ignore the hostility with his usual warm smile. Doesn't matter, Jane Taishu has said that the ground teams all need awareness training given the appearance of these new Geth. If they can sneak up on me they can definitely do the same to the rest of you. Liara didn't know which new Geth type they were talking about, but she assumed it was an infiltrator slash assassin class if it was using stealth. Sorry, Mr. Uzumaki. I didn't manage to get your rank before, so I hope I don't sound rude. Are you here to escort us on the tour? This made more sense than just having two aliens walking a human ship by themselves, though Liara was surprised when Naruto shook his head with a small laugh. Call me Naruto Liara san. I don't think my rank would translate very easily. I was actually on my way here from Jane Taishu, to ask if you were still serious about wanting to join the ground teams? The fact that Naruto added small words after everyone's name still confused Liara, especially given that none of the other humans seemed to do it, but the fact that he was here about her admittedly on the spot offer was surprising. Well, yes, if the commander will have me I would prefer to be doing something useful rather than stuck hiding on a ship out of harm's way. I thought the others were against it saying that I didn't have any military training. Naruto nodded and gestured out of the room. You will have to come meet Nirali Chan Liara-san. I think you and her would get along very well. And actually the other's concerns are the reason I am here. Jane Taishu has asked me to check your basic fitness and combat skills. If I think they are good enough then there will be no problem. Liara couldn't help but grin at the opportunity to prove herself. As well as in thanks to Naruto for doing this for her, she had to admit there were not many that would even entertain the possibility of allowing a civilian to fight with them. And don't worry about it too much, as Tali Chan is also a civilian, she will be doing the training with you. Normally the possibility of having someone else there would be good news, as it meant she wouldn't be the only one embarrassed by whatever training she was put through. But judging by Tali's sudden stiffening and nervous posture Liara couldn't help but feel even more ill at ease. Naruto You've already seen me work, remember? I am sure you don't need me to do an actual training course beyond our normal training. Naruto's grin, along with Tali's rapid attempt to excuse herself, turned her ill at ease into actual concern. By the goddess, what was she getting herself into? Pound dollar percent carrot and asterisk. And just a few more laps. Tali didn't ever think she could hate Naruto, not after he saved her life and helped her integrate herself into the crew. But as the boy turned around jogging on the spot in front of them, she found herself remarkably close to crossing that line. The training he had put her and Liara through had been absolutely grueling, making their close combat sessions look like a breeze in comparison, her lungs on the verge of pulling her suit's air filter down her throat with the large ragged breaths she was being forced to take. She was doing better than Liara though, obviously the young Asari had spent more time looking through dossiers and examining artifacts than training bent double as she attempted to try and draw precious air into her lungs once more. Naruto, that is enough. The call from the entrance to the cargo bay, which had been converted into an impromptu assault course, alerted Tali to the presence of the rest of Shepard's team. Kila, if things weren't embarrassing enough with them not completing the training course, everyone had turned up to watch as well. Naruto nodded, the boy barely even sweating before going over to grab a couple of bottles of water from near the start line of the assault course. They'd passed Taicho, 
Certainly most of the academy graduates from when I graduated would have struggled to keep up with me for that long. The news surprised and cheered up Tali. She had honestly thought given Naruto's lack of exertion that they had failed, something that Ashley was quick to bring up. But you don't even look like you were trying Naruto. Are you sure that you haven't gone easy on them? Ashley had been the most vocal in her concerns about the pair of them. Tali would have taken offense at that if she didn't know it was more about concern for their safety on the field than any kind of superiority complex. Ashley Chan, I don't think you could even make me work up a sweat before you passed out, though I am more than willing if you wish to try. There was silence for a moment. Even Tali had caught the possible double meaning to that sentence, and she was glad of her mask as the blood rushed back to her face. Naruto merely stood with a cheeky smile that made it clear he knew exactly how it sounded. Ashley seemed unsure whether to blush or get angry, which probably wasn't helped by Caden and Rex's laughter from behind them. The commander merely chuckled for a moment before speaking. I assume this was you taking it easy on them then? Perhaps you can run us through the advanced course then whilst Tali and Liara rest. We can run them through gun drills when we get back to the citadel. The laughter stopped abruptly as Naruto's smirk returned full force, Gurus looking a little uneasy even as Naruto started moving around to alter some of the setup pieces of equipment. Commander, are you sure this is necessary? We are due into the Citadel in a few hours. Jane Shepard, Spectre and Hero of the Human Alliance, merely grinned at the Turian's attempted excuse, and suddenly Tali got the rather smug feeling that she might yet come out best in this encounter. I am sure a little training won't do you any harm, Gurus. I did promise the executor that I would ensure you remained in peak physical condition after all. Now, let's start up with a gentle warm-up. Tali was distracted by Naruto appearing next to her, having just helped move the almost comatose Liara off to the side, gladly accepting his offer of a shoulder to help her shuffle off to where a small bed was set up amongst all the crates. Nearly there, Tali-chan. You did very well today much better than I was expecting. Now you get to watch this lot have a go, ten credits if I can make one of them cry. Tali smiled at his obvious attempt to distract her from her aching muscles, though she waved Naruto off when he tried to sit her down on the bed, running through a set of stretching exercises he had taught her. If she didn't finish properly she wouldn't be able to walk in a few hours. Thanks Naruto, though I will almost definitely hate you tomorrow for this. Kila, I am going to have to find Aquarian Spa to get rid of all this sweat. Originally upon joining the Normandy Tali would have been horrified to have said such a personal thing in front of someone, whether she knew them or not, but Naruto had a way of making her comfortable with being honest about things. Well if you want to massage Tali-chan, that will probably help your muscles a little, Sakura-chan taught me how to do them. Naruto trailed off before shaking his head and waving. Whenever he brought up someone from his past he tended to do this, though Tali wouldn't push for now as she tried to ignore the blush that rushed to her face at the rather personal offer. He let her have her secrets, she would let him have his, for now at least. Finishing the stretching for the moment, she sat down just as Naruto rejoined the group as they finished their warm-up laps of the inside of the assault course, taking them round to explain each exercise with a spring in his step she couldn't help but envy though from the slowly sinking faces on her comrades' faces, she definitely wasn't envying them right now. Pound dollar percent carrot and asterisk. Rex was a simple creature. To be honest all Krogan were really, he knew what made him happy in life and didn't usually get interested in things that ranged beyond fighting, drinking and eating. Saving his people from their slow bitter extinction was a lofty goal in comparison, but Rex knew he hadn't thought too hard about how to do it. After all, if he had complicated things, the other Krogan would probably have gotten confused. So, as he stopped to regain his breath for the eighth time in the last two hours, he found himself surprisingly interested in the young human that had managed to run a team of trained killers into the ground. It wasn't even his fighting instincts screaming at him to fight for dominance of the pack. Those had been silenced when he had lost the contest on them, as much as he complained about Naruto getting to run off first and get the advantage. This interest went deeper than that, to a level Rex had never really descended to before now. It wasn't just how the boy fought and how Rex could beat him, which was usually as far as Rex got with his acquaintances these days as they all ended up dying off quite quickly anyway. But more trying to understand how he thought, and why he was holding back so much. Come on old man, 
You are already ten laps behind me. The call reignited the fury that constantly hummed in Rex's blood, the insufferable brat finally breathing heavily as he jogged ahead of Commander Shepard, who was the only other member of the group still going. Be careful, brat. We Krogan may not have the best endurance, but we are natural sprinters. Very dangerous over short distances. Rex reinforced that with a biting motion as the boy moved past him again, Rex starting to jog again as Shepard caught him up, the normally unreadable woman scarlet in the face and obviously near the limit herself. She had really surprised him carrying on this long though, she certainly had tenacity and stubbornness that would fit a Krogan quite nicely, unlike the other three who had dropped out in the first hour. Caden had gone first, his implants flaring up under the strain of the exercise, then Ashley had twisted her ankle going over one of the obstacles, the woman more annoyed at herself for the injury rather than actually hurt by it. Gurus had lasted to the fifty-minute mark before stumbling to a halt and ejecting his lunch off to the side of the assault course. Commander? Joker's voice broke through the air and Rex knew it meant they had probably arrived at the Citadel. Shepard slowing to a halt in front of him and giving him a good excuse to stop there. Whilst his aching limbs and burning lungs made him feel more alive than he had ever probably felt off the battlefield, Rex wasn't going to fall into the brat's trap and run himself into the ground to beat him. Yes, Joker? Talking into her comment that Rex didn't hear Joker's reply, but Shepard carried on a moment later. Thanks, Joker. We will be on station in twenty minutes. Team, gather round. The barked order showed that the prolonged training had not improved Shepard's mood, and having seen her deal with Fist, Rex was in no mood to be the one on the end of her ire this time. Rex cast his eye around as the other members of the strike force shuffled and groaned as they moved into position around him, chuckling to himself as Naruto walked over still bouncing on the balls of his feet. Have to get you to do this again brat, though next time we add some shooting challenges, then you will be in trouble. Despite his almost unnatural proficiency in close combat and endurance, Rex knew that Naruto was only a passable shot at best, so challenging him to a shooting contest was the best chance at getting back at him. No shooting my ship. Whatever Naruto was thinking of replying was cut off by Shepard's glare, Rex managing to ignore the small feeling that he felt in the base of his stomach that usually only appeared when a Krogan female was brooding though he decided not to push his luck just in case Shepard decided to break her own newly minted rule. Now, we are headed to the Citadel for resupply as well as to sell the other items we found. I am giving each of you twenty-four hours leave. She paused as everyone perked up at that, though Rex noticed her and the brat share a look which probably meant that she had something planned for him. The council may come across some new leads at any time though, so I need you all to be able to make it back to the Normandy at an hour's notice. Rex didn't think this would be a problem for this group. The only one who drank heavily was him, and he wasn't in a drinking mood right now. He was in more of a smashing things mood. That said, given what we have just been through, I suggest trying some of the Presidium spas, unless you want to spend the next couple of days wincing every time you stand up. Dismissed. Short and to the point, Rex did rather like that about his new employer, as well as taking him to some of the best fights in the galaxy. As the others all went their separate ways Rex decided to see if he could help with whatever the commander had in mind for Naruto, given what the brat seemed to get up to most of the time it was almost certainly going to end up either pissing someone off or getting in a fight. And despite having done both more times than he could count, Rex knew there was nothing he enjoyed more. Chapter 10 The Ripples Spread Bar Levon would be the first to admit that he lead an easy life. Between his work for the Shadow Broker and his own financial dealings there was very little in life that he wanted that he couldn't get. Nearly everyone had a price and Barla was very good at working out what that was. As he found himself jammed up against the wall of his apartment, feet dangling almost three feet off the ground and flailing uselessly, Barla couldn't help but think he should probably have invested a bit more in his personal security systems for this particular circumstance. I have a trade for your boss, Little Whelp. The deep and obviously distorted voice did little to improve Barla's rather flaky constitution, the skull mask facing him right now terrifying him to the point that his attempt to defuse the situation came out a mere squeak rather than his usual calm tone. W. Well, sir, if you want to come by the office during the day I would be happy to. Barla stopped with a breathy gasp as the man holding him slammed his fist into the wall next to Barla's head, 
denting the metal structure in a way that should not be humanly possible to achieve barehanded. This is more convenient, and serves as the warning that comes with this trade. Should your boss try and fleece me I think you know who I will start with showing my displeasure. One of the few dangers to working for the shadow broker was dealing with individuals like this, those more adept at solving arguments with guns and brute force rather than words and money. Of course, Esther, perfectly clear. What is it you wish to trade with the shadow broker? Barla would definitely be hiring some bounty hunters to deal with this man. He refused to let himself get manhandled like this and then let the person get away with it. But if what he was offering the shadow broker was valuable then the deal could still be made first. He was abruptly dropped to the floor with a thud, eyes taking in every part of his attacker that he could see for a description later. The man wore high-end armor that had obviously been custom-tailored with spikes and extra armor pads. The distinctive mask overlay on his helmet would make it easy to find the man in the street at any rate. The man brought out two data slates, throwing one to Barla dismissively. The identities of a large number of gang members and their associated businesses on the Citadel, protection rackets, and other money-making activities. Browsing through the first few entries, to ensure its validity of course, Barla saw that while some of the information was already in their possession, this was quite a lot more detailed. Whilst we have some of this information the rest of it is certainly valuable enough, what are you wanting in return for this information? And what is on the second slate? Barla wasn't dumb. The second slate was obviously meant to be an enticement for the first deal to be favorable. Credits, high-end weaponry, whichever is easier for me make disappear into the wider market. Let's make it credits, then we can negotiate on the second slate, which contains the information of which gangs Spectre Shepard and CCC are going to hit in the next 48 hours. Barla's eyes widened. The time frame was quite short, but several gangs on the first list had standing deals with him to buy information related to law enforcement activities targeted at them, meaning that the second slate was far, far more valuable than the first one he had been given. How do you claim to have such information? Breaching the Alliance network on that new prototype of theirs is no easy task. Breaking into CSEC's mainframe was a lot easier. But Paolin wasn't a fool and generally didn't release this kind of information electronically until an hour before they started breaking down doors, so a CSCC leak was unlikely. Much easier if you just access the data in person, physical security is actually a lot less robust than electronic on that ship, was easier to get in and out of there than it was here. Something for him to note for later Barla thought to himself, he had several contacts that were known as high-class thieves. Perhaps he could continue obtaining the information even after he killed off this annoyance. Well, I will be able to offer you 20,000 credits for the first data slate and 50,000 for the second one, which is very generous I assure you. It was generous, for the first data slate at least, normally he wouldn't even offer half that for information he had already read and had most of already. 100,000 for both and an agreed 10,000 credit fee to be deposited with one of my contacts for each attack I provide for warning of from now on, per gang. Barla knew he could probably push for a better deal, but it was still less than half of what the gangs were offering and he had no desire to have this man in his home another minute if he could avoid it. You push a hard bargain, sir, but I will agree, this chit has 100,000 on it plus a little extra as an incentive. How will you contact me if you have more information? Barla hoped that the man would be stupid enough to arrange a meeting point or give him an extra net address. Both would make tracking him and killing him that much easier for his minions. Don't worry, Rat. If I have more information, it will get to you, one way or another. Barla couldn't react in time to avoid the second data slate hitting him in the face as it was thrown in his direction, stumbling back against the wall in shock. Looking up, the man was gone. Something Barla would have thought impossible given his heavy armor and build, but frantically casting his eyes around the room Barla could see no sign of his assailant. With a weary sigh Barla activated his comms unit to get the head of his security, his weekend lying ruined and now he would have to talk business before breakfast. Honestly, some people in this business were just barbarians. Line break. Crouched in a roof vent just outside the large apartment Barla Vaughn called home. The skull-masked figure chuckled darkly to itself for a moment before it shimmered and changed into the form of a familiar blonde ninja. Enjoy yourself there, QB? Glad you listened to the no-dismembering rule. The fox took a moment to reply, 
the deep mental rumble a moment later bursting with ill-contained glee. As if I would need to use physical violence against an insect like that, you give me no credit brat, though your deviousness is impressive given your usual holier-than-thou attitude. I wonder what your beloved Taicho would think of you selling out part of her attack for mere money? It was an impressive attempt at a guilt trip, given that the fox liked to pretend he hated Naruto's attempt to be honest and helpful with those he considered friends. It's fine, I have clones watching all the locations I gave him, which are only the ones on our strike list not CSECs. We now get to see what they move, where they move it, and whether we can actually put a face to any of Bar Levon's men that aren't just his hired thugs. The only issue might be Rex getting angsty, but from the sounds of it only a few of the gangs would be warned in time, so there should be enough trouble to keep the bloodthirsty Krogan happy. Whatever you say, brat, I wonder what your plan is for your newly gained ill gotten gains, whilst the nice sum for very little work it is probably coded to given the mole locations where any money is spent. It was a good point, and Naruto had no delusions about the Volus, and its undoubtedly quickly forming plans for revenge, which was why he already had a plan. Well, QB, let's give him a trail of crumbs to follow then, some of the people he sends after us might actually give you a challenge. That and have some good gear or bounties on them, though Naruto knew he would need to remind QB not to kill them unless necessary. They were only doing their job after all and he had definitely provoked Barla into putting out the contract. I doubted Brat, even with us trying to hide our abilities I can now fight any of these Xenos, though Rex might be fun to challenge sometime. Now what do we want to buy first? Naruto had a few ideas, though 100,000 credits wasn't actually an easy value to shift in bulk without attracting attention. How do you feel about buying some shares? There was at least one restaurant on the Citadel that he thought would do a lot better now he was around, especially if he kept using paying his tab as the price in any competition between him and the other Normandy strike team members. And the rest, well he had a plan to get Barla sniffing around an area where his men would definitely stick out. Line skip. Here's your winning sir. Please have a nice day. The slightly forced smile on the deflux casino cashier's face just made Naruto smile even brighter under his henged mask, having doubled the 30,000 credits he had originally exchanged for the casino's tokens in less than two hours. Now he had left Barla enough of a trail to make him think that his attacker lived in the area, visiting several shops and businesses near to the casino before using it in the casino itself. Now it was time for him to get back to Jane's tasks. Rex offering to give him a hand had been unexpected, but clearly the Krogan had been expecting trouble which was why he offered. Naruto had switched out with a clone who was then going to check in with several of his other clones, both to avoid pissing Rex off by saying no and also to provide a seemingly legitimate route for him to obtain his information from. Given he hadn't received any memories that was still going according to plan, so now he just had to find some trouble to keep Rex happy and then he was free for the evening. Given the conversation he had heard between one of the waitresses and the man at the bar, perhaps another visit to Cora's den was in order. Line skip. Despite spending the afternoon in the spa, Jane couldn't help but regret trying so hard to keep up with Naruto during his training session. Each step was painful and her muscles made it clear that doing anything but gingerly walking back to the Normandy would get a mutiny from them. Still it could be worse. She thought slightly amusedly to herself as she looked back to where Liara and Ashley were stumbling along, Ashley due to her injury and Liara due to her muscles seizing up after she had collapsed. Want a hand, Jane Chan? Turning to where Naruto had somehow appeared silently, Jane merely quirked an eyebrow in his direction, their agreed method of inquiring if he was the real one or not. Just finished with Rex and an issue in Korra's den. Then a little bird told me some of my precious teammates were struggling with the aftermath of our light training. So I thought I should leave Rex to mop up the few remaining pieces of trouble in Korra's den and came to offer my assistance in helping you back to the ship. Whilst the initial statement had her anger rising given his mocking smile, the offer of assistance certainly seemed genuine enough, and he had used the code phrase to indicate he was the original. What happened in Korra's den? I thought you were just checking in on a few things before we took another mission. Given she wanted the others to catch up, Jane decided that distracting herself from the pain of standing was the best thing to do in the meantime. Just a CCC op that was about to explode in their faces, 
idiots were trying to use a civilian with no training or expertise to infiltrate an illegal gun mod ring, they didn't even shut her sister up from talking about it. Got the girl out, beat up those trying to kill her for being a snitch, and then had one of my contacts complete the deal for them. Naruto's irritation was understandable given his background, Naruto's ability to infiltrate places was one he was very proud of, and others' mockery of the art was one of the few points he really liked to gripe about. I bet you are going to get a nice little paycheck out of it though, so I wouldn't try and complain too much Naruto. Now, as much as I would like to take it easy, I think Liara and Ash need your help considerably more than I do Naruto. I was starting to worry Liara wouldn't make it back at all. The Aseri perked up at the idea of help, though she looked a little confused when Naruto turned away from her and knelt down. He is offering you a piggyback Liara, not quite what I meant when I said help you but I suppose it will speed us up. Jane was slightly surprised that Liara didn't know what a piggyback was, maybe what she had been telling her of her childhood with Benizia wasn't exaggerated after all. Hey, are you sure this is okay? I am not sure about human customs and wouldn't want to give people the wrong idea. Obviously carrying someone around had a different meaning in a Seri culture, or at least that's what Jane assumed from Liara's statement. Well if you don't want the lift Liara I am sure that Ashley or I will take up Naruto's offer. Given how painful the journey had been thus far, Jane was more than slightly tempted to pull rank now she had made the initial offer, it would sure be trudging back under her own power. So it is not at all due to the fact you want the opportunity to get a feel for those rock-hard muscles? Or to stake your claim before Liara gets any ideas? The sarcastic voice inside her head was the part of her that mentally said the things it wasn't acceptable to utter out loud, or at least it usually was, this was out of left field even for her. Oh sorry commander, I didn't mean to offend, I was just curious about what people might assume. I think you are correct though, making it back without assistance may well be beyond me now, so if you are still willing Naruto? The blonde nodded, to Jane's slight chagrin, and Liara hopped into place a moment later. No worries Liara-chan, I imagine Tali-chan will probably need some help when she finishes with her spa as well, and we wouldn't want you injuring yourself before the next mission. Jane tried to ignore the slight blush on Liara's face as she wrapped her arms round Naruto's neck. Given the number of things that embarrassed or caught the young Asari off guard it probably wasn't even related to the current situation. Keep telling yourself that hun, though I reserve the right to say I told you so when you actually get jealous later. Normally Jane found her inner's comments amusing or very astute, but now she was just wishing she had told the shrink about it all those years ago. She knew it wouldn't let this little fantasy go for some time. Jane-chan? Are you okay? Naruto's call drew her from her rather one-sided internal argument, Jane quickly realizing she was frowning rather intensely in his direction, not exactly a good facial expression to be using despite her annoyance. Yes, I am fine Naruto, though next time I am pulling rank. And the time after and so on, Jane thought as the quartet started moving down the street once again not realizing the slightly sadistic grin she was now sporting would probably disturb Naruto even more than the frown had if he happened to notice. Line skip. Lines of text from reports across the galaxy flittered across the screens in front of him, filtered and condensed by his most trusted agents, allowing him to understand the top level of what was going on within his organization. You called for me? The accent would have given the approaching person away even if she had tried to hide her distinctive walking pattern. Miranda lost in a beautiful sight to behold even as she stopped ten yards from him and stood to attention, her face set in the calm facade she liked to present to the world. I did. Did you view the file I sent you? The report on this Naruto Uzumaki had of course been classified to the highest level within Alliance Command, but that just meant that it took his agents a little longer to pass it along to him. Of course, though I question the validity of it, which I imagine you foresaw given we are meeting now. Despite the fact she could and often did use subtlety and manipulation when talking with others, Miranda was one of the few trusted to enter his inner sanctum. There was a level of trust there that most would be unable to fathom for such an organization. Of course. I could have just forwarded these to you but I felt the tactical assessment could come from you in person. With a wave of his hand the video stream started what little security footage left on Eden Prime that his operatives could salvage, the arrival of the Normandy on the Citadel, and the fight that went with it, and so on. As you can see, 
the report's indications of Uzumaki's ability to duplicate himself are not as far-fetched as first is to be believed, which given how suspicious he seemed at first points to other skills he is no doubt still hiding. Tactical Assessment Whilst he had already made his own assessment regarding the boy, it was always interesting to hear how the minds of his subordinates worked. Tactically? Probably about average for his age, the boy seems to just spam his duplicates and send them in en masse. That does point to this ability being one that does not strain him overly, or that he is so used to the strain that several dozen clones are not a problem for him now, meaning that in terms of physical threat I would put him on the same level as one of our sweep teams. Interesting, lower than he had put the boy, but he supposed she didn't have all the data and it was closer to his assessment than Kai's was. And knowing you as I do operate a Lawson, you want to know why I have brought this to your attention given the stand down and evacuate order that I have given regarding humanity's new specter and her crew? Not exactly a leap of logic. Whilst Uzumaki's abilities fascinated him, Miranda was currently running a dozen other teams for him and a bit too busy to just summon over in order to show off his new find. I wouldn't question your reason, sir. His abilities would make him quite the asset if he was properly trained. Please don't tell me you called me to get me to seduce him? Whilst there were many distasteful things Miranda had done for him and Cerberus, she had made it clear that sleeping with people for the job was a line she wasn't going to cross, and he couldn't help but respect her for that. Of course not, if the reports of his training as a shinobi are even remotely accurate he would see that coming a mile off, though given all of our data has come from the boy himself thus far I imagine everything we know has to be taken with a large spoon of salt. My point is that he is entirely new to the galaxy as a whole, meaning that he has no preconceived notions of us or Cerberus as a whole, certainly not the usual drivel that is fed to the masses by the Alliance spin doctors. Something he would have loved to rectify if he had the time and resources, but humanity's future was far more important than his personal reputation. So you wish for me to make contact with him and act as a diplomat to Cerberus? He nodded silently allowing Miranda to then continue speaking. I will need to pass some of my operations to other operators. If I am going to the Citadel, I will not be able to manage them effectively. The elusive man nodded. He had expected this request even as he summoned her. Send me the details. I will run the operations in your absence. It has been some time since I have been into the field after all and there was rarely a better opportunity to remind some of his lower-level employees that he was actually real, not merely a shadowy figure that haunted their minds when they were behind on reports. He was a people person after all. Of course, anything else? It was only slight, but he allowed himself a small upturning of the corners of his mouth as Miranda once again proved much easier to anticipate and understand than she would want the feeling of satisfaction disappearing moments later as he nodded and held out a small electronic device. Yes, there is one thing I think would be advantageous to us, both in understanding Uzumaki and also in getting us information on the Spectre's progress outside of what she reports to the Council. Given my orders we will need to hire someone in from the outside to infiltrate the ship and plant this in the main data core, the who I leave up to you, though if they could also nab any medical records on Uzumaki whilst they are there that would be beneficial. He knew who she would think of first, after all it would be the same person he had thought of, but the illusion of independent thought was important to make his people feel valued. He couldn't do the thinking for them all the time now could he? Dismissing Miranda in his best attempt at a civil and warm manner, he turned back to the screens and began to actively focus on the data. He might have missed something after all and that just wouldn't do. Interesting. The single utterance was the only indication he gave of his mental processes as he read the bounty contract from the Citadel, put out by Barla Vaughn for a skull-masked-wearing mercenary, last seen in flux, concluding from the information in the contract that this was the Uzumaki in disguise. After all, who else could Dent steal with just a punch, then disappear before Barla had a chance to call his hired cronies? If the boy did allow Miranda to talk him into supporting their cause— he was definitely going to have to teach him a lot more about subtlety.